Welcome back to the first edition of Where Are They At Now Wednesdays, where we examine the tribe or nation of Moab or Mawaaba in Hebrew. So, in order to understand the Moabites, we must understand who they come from and the land that was given unto them. All praises to Ahiah. The book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 30. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. So Lot's daughters got him drunk, right, and lied with him. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in and lie down with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And, and they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. All right. So the Moabites are children of incest from Lot. That's where the Moabites come from. That's why Moab in Hebrew is Mawaaba, which means of the father. All right, because they are of their father, incest. All right. So now let's continue and see the land that was given unto Lot, which the Moabites would possess. The book of Genesis, chapter 13, verse 7. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that is, was, that is, was well watered everywhere before the Most High, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Most High, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. All right, Jordan is um, east of Israel. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. So, the land of the Moabites, which their forefather is Lot, the land he went into, the land that was given unto him, allocated unto them, and the land allocated unto the Moabites, is the land of Jordan, which was be later became um, the land of Moab, all right? All right, so the Moabites are children of incest, from Lot laying with his daughters, his daughters got him drunk, all right? And we see that the Chinese people... Um, still bore that trait of incest uh, through their eyes to this day. We even find it in a lot of their um, artifacts still to this day. So now let's look at the history of the land and what happened to them while they were in their land. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 21. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we be past thy borders. All right. So Israel is requesting um, permission from the Amorite king, which is a Hamitic people, the Africans, to pass through um, his land along the king's highway so they may have safe passage. Right. And she and Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. 
But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok, even unto the children of, of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. All right, so the Amorite king which just lost and was smote in battle and got all his cities taken by Israel, this Amorite king, Sihon, had fought against the Moabite king and taken all the land out of his hand. So this Amorite king possessed the land of the Moabites, and he just lost it to the Israelites. You understand? Verse 27, Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs, saying, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It hath consumed Ar of Moab, and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab! Thou art undone, O people of Chemosh! He hath given his sons that escaped and his daughters into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. All right. So the Moabites have been given into captivity and their lands taken by Sihon, king of the Amorites. And these are all the Moabites under the Arnon River in the actual land of Moab, because you have the plains of Moab, which is above the Arnon River. All right. Which is the land that, um, Gad, Manasseh, and Reuben possessed at one point, the plains of Moab, and then you have the actual land of Moab, which is under the Arnon River. Those people were taken into captivity by Sihon, and Sihon just was killed, and he lost the lands that he took um, but then, unto the Israelites. You understand? So you still have Moabites out, but they're in the hanging around in the plains of Moab across the Arnon River. All right. The, the, the actual Moabites of Moab under the Arnon River, they have been taken into captivity by Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which have just lost the land unto Israel. So the Moabites aren't even in their own land. Let's prove it. Next chapter. Numbers 22, verse 1. And the children of Israel set forth and pitched tent in the plains of Moab. There goes that plains of Moab again. Remember, the plains of Moab is above the, the um, Arnon River. All right. On the sides of Jordan by Jericho and Balak, the son of Zophar, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because there were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now, these Moabites are dwelling in the plains of Moab. Remember, the Moabites that were in the plains of Moab, they weren't taken in captivity by Sihon. It was the Moabites that were under the Arnon River that was in the actual land of Moab who went into captivity. So you had a couple scragglers uh, and drifters dw dwelling up in the uh, plains of Moab. Uh, I understand. So um, this is further proof because it says, let me read it one more time. Numbers 22 and 1. And the children of Israel set forth and pitched tent in the plains of Moab. Plains would mean like countryside. You understand? Um, let me get one more precept to prove that the plains of Moab is not the same place as the actual land of Moab, which is under the Arnon River. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 9. And Ahiah said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle. For I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given R unto the children of Lot for a possession. All right. Remember, the children of Lot, like we said in the beginning, are the Moabites. So the Most High told Moses that he will not give Israel. He will not give the Israelites uh, the Moabites land because it was for the children of Lot. And it's talking about the land under the Arnon River, which is the actual land of Moab. Let's prove that with the scriptures. 
the book of Judges, chapter 11, verse 14. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east of the land of Moab and pitched on the other side of Arnon. All right, they pitched on the other side. He's telling this Ammonite king, uh, Jephthah, he's telling this Ammonite king that, hey, man, we pitched on the other side of uh, Arnon, the plains of Moab, not in the actual land of Moab. Right. Let's keep reading. But came not within the border of Moab for Arnon was the border of Moab. So Jephthah saying, hey, we pitched on the other side of Arnon in the plains of Moab, but we didn't pitch uh, within the border of Moab. Right. So that's the land that was later on given to um, Gad, Manasseh and the tribe of Reuben. You know, of course, they went over into Israel later, but when they went up into that land, they were, that land was allocated unto them. So the Moabites, even in that area, didn't even have the land. So they went into captivity. And let's prove that with the scriptures. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verse 43. Fear in the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Most High. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For I will for I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Most High, or some say the Lord. They that fled under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force, but a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon and a flame out of the midst of Sihon. Remember Sihon? Sihon was the Ammonite king that uh, took the Moabites into captivity and he was destroyed and killed down and his land was taken by Israel. Right. So this is um, speaking about what already happened. Right. And it says, and shall devour the corner of Moab and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. Woe be unto thee, Moab. Now this is prophecy. The people of Chemosh perish for thy sons are taken captives and thy daughters captives. Remember, the Moabites were taken captives by um, Sihon. Right. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the later days. All right, so in the later days, the Most High is going to bring again the captivity of Moab, saith the Most High. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. All right, so, so this point right here is the judgment of the Moabites, that they're going to still go into captivity, but they've already still gone into captivity, and they've been pretty much dispersed at this point. So um, that's why you don't see Moab spoken about in the New Testament. Now let's prove the Moabites went into captivity, their land was taken from them, and that someone came and set up shop in their lands. The book of Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 8. Thus saith Ahiah the Most High, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jezimoth, Baalmion, and Kerathiam, unto the man of the east, with the Ammonites, and I will give them in possession, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. And I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that Ahiah is the Most High. Or some say the Lord thy God. So let's examine this. When you look at verse 9, it says, Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jezimoth, Baalmion, and Kerathiam. Then verse 10 says, Unto the men of the east. So there's a certain men, a group of men or peoples of the east that came and took all the cities uh, of the land of Moab after the Moabites going into captivity. So the Moabites have to get out of the land. They can't go west because there's Israel and you can't go into the ocean, right? They can't go south because you have Edom there and they can't go further north because that 
those lands have been already been taken as well. So they have to go east and their land was just taken by a people of the east. So let's examine this people of the east that took the Moabites land in all their cities after the Moabites were pushed out and went into captivity. This is from a site called Visit Petra and it's on the Nabataeans. The Nabataeans, an Arab tribe, first appeared in the 6th century BC in the desert located to the east of Jordan. All right, so that would be to the east of Moab. These are the men that came from the east and took uh, the cities of Moab and, and, and um, assumed themselves in that position there, right? It says, and came from the southeast of the Arabian Peninsula. So after the fall of the southern kingdom to Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC, the Moabites fled the land, all right, because it was prophesied in 593 BC in around Ezekiel's time in Ezekiel 25 that the men of the east would take um, the Moabites land and the Ammonites land and they would go into captivity, right? And they fell in 605, or the southern kingdom of Israel fell in 605 BC to Nebuchadnezzar and the, and the Moabites just straight up fled up out of the land because the Nabataeans are the ones who moved in the land around the 6th century BC, Let's prove it. First Maccabees chapter five, verse 23. And those that were in Galilee and in Arbatus with their wives and their children and all that they had took a, what took he away with him and brought them into Judea with great joy. Judas Maccabeus also and his brother Jonathan went over Jordan and traveled three days journey in the wilderness. All right. So Judas Maccabeus and his brother Jordan or his brother Jonathan go over um the Jordan River from Judea. And let's see who, what people they meet when they first go over there. Where they meet the Nabathites who came unto them in a peaceable manner and told them everything that had happened to their brethren in the land of Galad. So the Nabathites are, are actually the Nabataeans. So, which we'll also prove here in just a sec. But Judas Maccabeus and his brother Jonathan, they go over the Jordan River from Judea which would be into the, the old land of Moab, but now is the land of the Nabathites or Nabataeans because this is uh, 167 BC or so, all right? And the Moabites just don't even have that land no more. They're not even there anymore, you understand? The book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 13. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. By their names, according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nabajoth, all right, so the firstborn of Ishmael is Nabajoth, and Kedar, and Adbiel, and Mibsam. So the firstborn son of Ishmael is Nabajoth. So when we look at Nabajoth, and you look up Nabajoth, Nabajoth comes back to either Nabat, which Nabat and Nabajoth, which are just different uh, pronunciations and translations, means the descendant, I mean, the forefather, the, uh, the progenitor of the Nabataeans. So the Nabataeans come from Nabajoth, the son of Ishmael, the firstborn son of Ishmael. So that's why the people in Jordan today are Ishmaelites, are actually Arabs, because that's where they come from. All right. They're Nabataeans. They, they inhabit the land of present day Jordan, which would be the land of the Moabites, including the plains of the Moabites. All right. So that's why the people in present day Jordan are um, Ishmaelites or Arabs, because they're descendants of Nabajoth, the Nabataeans. Now let's prove the people that was exiled out of the plains of Moab above the Arnon River and the people that were exiled out of the lands of Moab under the Arnon River, which is the actual land of Moab, are the people of China today because they went east. That's what they did. They couldn't go north. They couldn't go south and they couldn't go west. So they had to go far east, which are the people of China. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verse 46. Woe be unto thee, O Moab, the people of Chemosh perish, for thy sons are taken captives and thy daughters captives. All right. So the Moabites, they are the people of Chemosh. Now let's look at Chemosh and examine Chemosh and connect it to the Chinese. This is from Strong 3645. Kimash or Chawamash, Kimash, Subdur, 
the national deity of the Moabites and the god of the Ammonites, also identified with Baal of Peor, Baal Zebub, Mars, and Saturn. Worship of this god was introduced into Jerusalem by Solomon and abolished by King Josiah of Judah. Now the point here is Chemosh was the national deity of the Moabites and the god of the Ammonites. So what what two national de what national deities and national pagan uh, symbols do the Chinese and the Japanese hold together? The dragon. All right. When you look at the dragon is a subduer. All right. Um, it subdues. When you even look at everything that it does, it's it's subduing. All right. And they took that God all the way with them from Moab to China. That's why the Chinese and the Moabites share the dragon still even to this day. All right. If you want to find a culture or ancient culture and see who they are present day, the best thing to do is look at their gods and their deities because the most high gave these nations their gods. They can never come unto him. So what they have is what they have and they still got it. Let's further prove. The book of Judges, chapter three, verse 14. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried unto Ahiah, Ahiah raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. All right. So this is where the Chinese get that worshiping of the Buddha, the worshiping of the very fat man because of their, their king here, Eglon. Right. Because Buddhism doesn't even come from um, China. All right. It, it originated in, in the northeast uh, region of India in the Lumbini foothills. All right. So it has no business even there being in China, but it is. And we're going to see why. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries that are by Gagal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in the summer parlor, which he had made for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from Ahiah unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the half also went in after the, after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly and the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. All right. So the Benjamite Ehud, whom the Most High raised up, at that time, kills this very, very fat um, king, the Moabite king, Eglon. It's, it's a, it's, he's so fat that it has to be pointed out in the scriptures, right? The fattest person in the scriptures. And, and, and it has to be pointed out, right? He kills this uh, king, Eglon, of Moab, right? And he assassinates him. So the Chinese take this 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 uh, Buddhism in because they're, they're trying to personify and deify their fat king, Eglon, because Buddhism, once again, doesn't even come from China. And when Buddhism is in, uh, our Buddha is depicted in India, he's all skinny. You know, he's on the health plan and whatnot. He's all, you know, looking healthy. Whatever. But when he gets over to China, back to where he's supposed to be at with the Moabites, Chinese, he's back fat again. Right. He's on the obese plan. So uh, because the Chinese took, they're taking their gods from Moab. Right. That they're, they are the Moabites. All right. And with that being said, I want to say all praises to Ahaya, Baha'sham Yusha, Wa Racha Kwadash. All right. And look out for more. Make sure you subscribe. Press the notification button, Jeremiah 611. Make sure you subscribe to the scriptures above all things. And, uh, you know, big up to, out, to all those out there doing the work in sincerity and spirit and truth. All right. And death and destruction always to Babylon. Kwam Yashirabah.